for today is an engineer by training and entrepreneur by nature. He has over 25 years of bringing innovative solutions to markets such as Bluetooth, USB, RFID, semiconductor DNA sequencing, IoT, and smart home. His experience gives him a unique perspective on the power of storytelling for businesses. He has been a part of six startups in various management roles. He is an inventor or, or co-inventor of over 10 patents. And moreover, he has also published six books, which we will all be listing down on our show notes. He is also the host of the Entrepreneur Ethos podcast and owner of JSY PR and Marketing. It's a firm that focuses on helping IoT, smart home, and consumer medical device companies tell better stories about their products and services. Lastly, he is the executive director of JSY Giving, a nonprofit that was formed in loving memory of Jane Yin Bolander to help nonprofits in the literacy, women, and minority entrepreneurship, anti-human trafficking, and services for youth sectors to tell better stories. Listeners, help us welcome... Jari Bolander. Hey Jari, welcome to the hey. show. Oh, thank you. And what a what a lovely introduction that I ended up writing. So I'm so glad you could read it all. <laughs> <laughs> we, we combined the uh, bits of, uh, of stuff, but uh, really Jar Jari, we're so glad to have you here with us. And uh, yeah, as, like I mentioned earlier, while we were doing our research, the more we learned about you, the more questions we wanted to ask you. And I'm sure our <laughs> listeners will soon find out why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so... the reason I have all the gray and the beard and, you know, I've got a face made for radio at times, right? Because, yeah, I've done a lot of stuff over my 50 plus 50 some odd years on the planet. So, yeah. <laughs> well, um, let's start with, well, let's start with the the basics and Jari, tell please tell our listeners uh, a bit about your yourself. Yeah, sure. So um, I grew up in Silicon Valley. Um, right now I live in San Francisco, California. Um, so you know, back in the you know '90s, early to mid '90s is when the internet was starting to get built. And so I graduated from college and looked around and said, "What should I do?" And it's like there's so many startups here you could throw a rock at hit like a billion of them it's just insane so ended up going to a bunch of semiconductor startups because my degree <clears throat> was in electrical engineering and my emphasis was on semiconductor physics so all the chips in your phone bluetooth usb i mean you know it just the wacky stuff the the stuff that's like you know that makes us be able to talk over microsoft team <laughs> you know like hardcore <laughs> design stuff. And so I kind of beat bopped around Silicon Valley for a long time doing, you know, corporate gig and then, you know, doing a bunch of startups. And then, um, and then I, as I like to say, I met a girl and that girl ran a publicist company for professional athletes. Happens to be called JSY PR and marketing. And JSY stands for uh, Jane Shinyi Yin. <clears throat> and uh, fell in love, you know, got married, uh, started to think about having a family, and then uh, she got leukemia. And at that point in our lives, um, we had a choice to make. Do I continue to do my wacky startup stuff, or do I run a PR and marketing company, which I literally have zero experience running PR and marketing companies. I, I like to say I can write. I'm a pretty okay writer, which is a good thing. Like if you can write the words, the words and tell stories, you're like half the battle or more, more like 80% of the battle. So I remember we're sitting in her family's home and she looks at me and she's just like, you got to run JSY. And I'm like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I don't even know what a publicist does. All I know is you bang on your computer all day and scream at people on the phone. That's all I know about what you do. Other than we go to cool parties and meet celebrities and drink cocktails and go to all these great openings and dinners. I go, that's the fun part. I, I don't know how to put any of that stuff together. And she's like, well, you got to suck it up, buttercup. That's the only thing paying us right now. So as she always did, pretty clear <laughs> what she wanted me to do. Uh, so I started running JSY PR and marketing, and then uh, 15 months later, she died. And 
that was one of those seminal moments in your life where you just sit there and you go, what in the heck am I going to do with the rest of my life? I was 46. I'm a widower. Normally, those two things don't go together, right? And so I just sat there and pondered like, gosh, what, what am I going to do? Well, it turns out I'm really good at telling stories, even though I'm an engineer, right? It's, I'm even better at explaining complex technology to like your grandmother, because most technology people are so in love with their silly little app, bro app, blah, 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 that they, they fail to correctly explain in a clear, concise, and compelling way, what, what's this good for? Like, are you yet another Zoom? Like, oh, or yet another blah? Like, the Uber of blah? Like, yeah, who cares, right? And so I just started telling stories for startups and some nonprofits. We formed JSY Giving in, in her memory to help some of her passion, which, which, which is what she mentioned, and I really appreciate you doing that. She was really passionate about women minority entrepreneurs anti-human trafficking, literacy, and helping at-risk youth, because a lot of the clients that we had at the time, and we still do have some clients that do foundations to help kids. And so, you know, fast forward four and a half years later, I'm still <laughs> running this thing. I think, okay, I don't know, <laughs> just crazy some days to think that I, uh, where I've come from, the humble beginnings of a engineering nerd type guy all the way to I'm talking to you on Microsoft Teams. One person's in Singapore, one person's in Belgium. I'm in San Francisco and we're talking about stories. <laughs> so it's like never thought my life would end up this way. But what was what's really cool about that is that you know when when you're when you have something like a very seminal event in your life, the world gets into focus pretty quick. And then you realize, you know, every single day is a precious day. Like, gosh, what am I going to do with my day today? You know, and even if it's a bad quote unquote day, man, at least you have a day. You've got a day. And time is our most valuable resource. Like you can print money, but you can't print time. Everyone gets the same 24 hours in a day. Some of us get more years than others. But generally, once we waste our time, poof, it's gone off into the ether to never be found again, right? So then I decided, well, I'm pretty good at telling stories. I'm pretty good at writing. Jane taught me a lot about PR, marketing, strategic communications. Maybe I should just dedicate my life to helping people tell better stories. And so that's what I do. Wow. Wow. Before, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm out of uh, I'm out of breath, a bit out of words, <laughs> jarring. Yeah. And yeah, I, I read about what happened to your to your wife, and I'm I'm really sorry about it. I didn't know how to you know ask you about it or if you wanted to talk about it right now because I know when my my father died, I was a, a wreck. It, it was a very difficult time, so I yeah, I know sure. what you're you're going through and. Yeah, thank you. To just yeah. be able to pick yourself up and and do what you're doing right now. Wow. I'm sure she's where wherever she is now. She's very, very oh, proud of I you. I hope so. Yeah. Like I every day I say, <laughs> Jane, would Jane be proud of what her name was Jane, right? Would would Jane be proud of what I'm doing? And yeah, she would be. But what what was even more powerful about that, more powerful about what we had talked about as a couple. And I'm actually writing a memoir about all this, too, to sort of process the grief and the challenges. And this is especially important for men. Men have a bad time and or are pretty horrible at sharing feelings, right? Because there's this whole, like, masculinity, and some people call it toxic masculinity. Some people just call it, like, suck it up. You know, it, it, it's a strange kind of beast because as, um, as a woman, um, you, it's perfectly acceptable for you to cry and show emotion, but it's not acceptable for you to show anger. You, you get all these really horrible words said about you. As a man, it's okay for me to be angry, right? But I can't show emotion. I can't cry. I can't be vulnerable. This seems stupid to me because we're humans. We have those both of those emotions. And if you don't share that, if you don't like let it out, you will, you know, go down a bad path. And I went down a bad path, you know, abused alcohol, abused drugs, 
to try to like fill the void that was left. And what I found um, through actually finding love again, because Jane was really adamant about like, you need to be happy because <laughs> I know you're going to handle this bad when I'm gone. And I know you and you're going to be in your own private pity party, you know, saying to yourself, it's 5 p.m. somewhere. I think I could have a glass of scotch, you know. <laughs> and I found a, a beautiful woman <clears throat> named Minerva who was very kind to me and very supportive um, and also was very respectful of what I had with Jane and really encouraged me to talk through it and, you know, go to therapy to help with that as well, but also encouraged me to write my truth. And I talk about that time in my life. I talk about Jane and I talk about the experiences because more men need to talk about what this means to them. And the more stories we tell about normalizing the feelings, emotion, the anger, the grief, the sorrow, the joy, in some cases we had, you know, even during her time <laughs> when she was going through her leukemia treatment, you know, we had some fun. I mean, it's not probably the kind of fun we used to have, like going jet setting with all these celebrities drinking, you know, $50 cocktails or whatever with 25 year old single malt scotch stuff, but fun nonetheless. So yeah, I'm, I love talking about it. Actually, every time I talk about it, I heal a little bit more. So, and I hope that uh, those that are going through challenges like what you did with with when your loved one passed and died, find a little comfort and don't feel so alone. That's the other thing that's important. Like you feel really alone when you go through something like that. So, you're not alone, man. Like this is the way it is, and they loved you and. You love them, and it's okay to be sad. So, wow, very, very, very touching. Um, and 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 maybe maybe to to touch upon one subject you mentioned uh, stories, right? Um, <laughs> clearly, you're a very good storyteller, and then you and Thank you. and uh, I'm I'm in awe in how you present, <laughs> how you talk about all of this. Oosh, so I practice this a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm because because we are a startup. Right. Mm. And, and storytelling is, is very, very important to us, obviously, to our clients, mm. uh, to our vendors. And of course, we're a marketplace to our vendors, to investors internally, uh, everyone. The storytelling is, is, is actually very, very. So I guess the question I, I have is how do you help organizations tell stories? How do you go about? Yeah, that's that's actually a really astute question, because a lot of times people get buried in what they do and not why they do it and what it actually means. <clears throat> so what I try to do is when I work with a client, a company, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Even nonprofit organizations, I do some volunteer work for them because they are horrific at telling stories. They're just like, uh, anyway, I could go on and on about how awful they are. But <laughs> the, the it comes down to the fact that um, we as a species exist and all three of us are talking on the phone, Microsoft Teams thing today at this moment right now, because our ancestors told the best stories. I mean, that's the fact, like your ancestors said, hey, this is where the food is. That's where the saber tooth tiger is. That's a good mate. That's not a good mate. That tribe over there, avoid them. That tribe over there is cool. And over time, I mean, we just, that's how we, that's how we learn, actually. In fact, there's a lot of research that suggests that the best way to learn is through story. So it's only natural that a company, an organization, needs to use stories to get the word out about what they do. And not exactly like just, oh, you know, we circumvent this or we coalesce the vapors of human existence into a tangible form because we're so cool but the real humanity behind it, because stories are in our DNA. And the other thing is stories have structure. All stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. All stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. All stories pull at our emotions, right? The best story is an emotional story that starts off with, well, I met a girl and you're like, ooh, or whatever the hook is, right? That, that hooks us in. And business organization is all about when you're pitching to an investor, when you're trying to raise money from a nonprofit, when you're trying to get customers to pay for your stuff, when you're like trying to find a mate, <laughs> when you're trying to convince, you know, 
<laughs> your uh, girlfriend's dad that you're a viable candidate for marriage. You know, <laughs> these are stories that you have to tell because you have to convince someone, right? And convincing and persuasion is all about telling a better story. And so, what I've found is when I work with clients and organizations is that they've lost that. They are so focused on the minutia, the tactical day to day. Oh yeah, we we can do your content marketing, your growth hacking, and your blah, 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 and you're just like buzzword bingo, word salad. I don't even know what you mean. Like, you know, the first question I ask is, well, why do you do this? Why? You know, and of course there's the external trappings of that, like fame, fortune, prestige, being on cool podcasts like yours. You know, of course, all the, the trappings of fame and fortune. That's all fleeting, right? Like that. It's fleeting. So, no, internally, why do you do what you do? So that's a very important question. And a lot of people have to sit there and really think about it because sometimes they got into it one reason. And over time, as fame, fortune, prestige, and or other things go south, they switch. But fundamentally, people want to know any, any, any person that's going to do business with you, they want to trust you. That's like I was I was actually there was this one great video about how a deal gets done or a sale gets done is there's pain point, budget and trust. And I don't remember who said this. I think his name was Matt, but I'm like, wow, it's like that's a really good thing because there's for stories. It's sort of similar, right? The beginning, the middle, the end, the um, uh, like for persuasion, as, as Aristotle said way back in the day, right? Aristotle had three ways to persuade people. There's the pathos, the logos, and the ethos. The pathos is emotion. The logos is the logical progression. The ethos is your bona fides. It's your credibility. So as a company, when I go talk with them, I say, hey, well, you know, seems like you're struggling telling your story. And of course, they've got the mission, vision, value, buzzword, bingo, blah, you know, eh, like, just, no, like, who, who are you? as a person, as a founder, as an organization, how do you show up? And that can sometimes be very challenging because people tend to think, especially here in Silicon Valley, right, that they have two, two personas. They've got the business hardcore, crushing it, metrics that matter, building a unicorn. It's all sunny in startup land, right? And then they're like at home with their wife and kids. And, oh, I'm such a nice guy. No, 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 no. You're one person. When you try to split your two, that's when problems happen. Because what you are the majority of the time is going to be what you are the majority of the time. <laughs> so um, I try to get them to be a little more human about it. I try to get them to go down to first principles. Like, what's the, you know, what's the core? What's the higher good? Every business has a higher good. I mean, even, you know, if you're, you know, selling Jack Daniels or Coca-Cola, like there's something that's higher good. And we always start there. And then the rest of it's just details. So. Has there ever been a business, Jari, that you've encountered where after like digging through what story they had to tell, you were like, nah. Uh, they shall rename, remain nameless, but yes, <laughs> usually it's because they get into it. Well, they get into it for the wrong reasons, right? I mean, that's the reason why I do the Entrepreneur Ethos podcast, right? So the whole goal of the Entrepreneur Ethos podcast is to build a more ethical, inclusive, and resilient world through educating and inspiring the next generation of entrepreneur. Okay, that's a pretty bold, big statement. You're like, Jari, who the hell are you to do this? Well, no one else is doing it, so I better, right? And I wrote the book because of this, right? But the, the fundamental tenet is this is not a job being an entrepreneur. It's not a job to get rich at. It just, it's not going to happen. The probability is so low that you really have to enjoy what you do. And you should have a higher good. Like, why the heck are you doing it? Yeah, you got to eat. I get it. You got to eat. You got to get a car. You got kids. Okay, fine. Got it. Not a problem. But beyond that, it's not about getting rich. Right. It's it's usually about building an independent life that completes you so that you have freedom to do what you want to do. When you lose sight of that and you're all like in the, the buzzwordy bingo, I want to build all this, build a unicorn, blah, 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 money, 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 fame, 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 fame. Right. Just like you're not in it for the right reason. I can't 
I can in good conscience as someone with a high amount of ethos, I can't work with you. That's not to say that they don't have a good product, not to say that they're not good people. They just lost the way. And usually this is forced upon them in some cases when they get investment. <laughs> the more money you get from investors, the more this is a likelihood scenario. <laughs> so it's hard to have those pressures on you and not get a little jaded that way. But, you know, most successful companies have a pretty strong why of why they're doing it. The founders are really like they're dedicated, you know, so. Yeah, I can't I can't name them, but there have been several. <laughs> well, for these companies, it's probably the reason why they're successful, because they're able to nail their story and tell their story and then make a hero out of the clients that are their target audience that actually are into their products. Right. Or yeah. No, I mean, you, that's actually a really good point. I'm glad you brought up the hero of the story is usually the customer. You know, the the firm, <clears throat> the product is usually, you know, part of the fellowship of the ring, right? You're Sam. You're not Frodo. <laughs> like, your job's to help. Like, you know, without you, okay, it's harder. It's a harder quest, right? But even, you know, you're not the, your company's not you're the not hero. You're not the star. <laughs> you're not the star. And sometimes... That's hard for some people to swallow <laughs> that uh, realization. So, um, but, you know, people learn and grow. You know, I think it's what's interesting. And, 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 and I'm glad you brought up, you know, about the hero's journey, which is a Joseph Campbell construct. That's a, one of the most used kind of archetypes or archetypes in, in storytelling. And usually, you know, that kind of construct is a, is a good way to think about it because, you know, the hero, your customer, beep bopping along in the normal world, and all of a sudden something disrupts the status quo. If this was, you know, if we were talking about like um, some other authors that said like, you know, walks around, oh, falls in a hole. Like, oh, now what? You know, what do I do? Right? Like there's something that disrupts the status quo. And usually for the hero, the hero has to then the customer figure out how he's going to solve him or her is going to solve this problem. And that's the quest, right? How, how are you as a company going to help the hero or heroine solve the quest? Like, cause everyone's on a quest in some, in some way, shape or form. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very interesting way to think about it. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because a lot, a lot of people think of it that way. They think the company's the hero company's not the hero. You're, you're, and you're the side. Just like a relationship. You know, listening has a lot to do with it. You have to listen to our customers and under really understand what they need, kind of like, and sometimes you even have to read between the lines. It's really, it's really just you know, kind of like a relationship. Sometimes they're saying something, but what they're really saying is, is something, <laughs> something else. Does that make sense? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's, just, it's the difference between a want and a need, right? A want is an external thing, a need is internal. A lot of people say what they want, but they really don't know what they need. And stories are about getting down to that internal need. You know, why do you really want the BMW? You don't need it to get to point A to point B. Why do you want the Rolex? You know. Why do you want to donate to a nonprofit? Why does nonprofit exist? So, you know, it's it's a hard thing to do. Don't get me wrong. It takes a lot of soul searching too. A lot, a lot of a lot of folks, when they realize this, there's a burden that lifts off of them because now they're not working in the business, they're working on the business, as they like to say, right? They're they're they have a higher good. There's a bigger, bigger need. That's important and sometimes hard to find. So Barry, I keep I am take, I'm taking down notes here. This is gold. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> applicable Thank to you. us. Uh, tomorrow we're going to we're going to redo a lot of things already. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. It's very kind of you to say. Yeah, because uh, we started like what when was that about? Like six months ago. Mm. 
and to go. So we uh, we have a fresh story. <laughs> still, still a lot of of stories to encounter. Or our story is fresh and. Yeah, how did you guys get together? How did you form all this? This is fascinating. I didn't know it was only six months old. This is pretty cool. Yeah. So, tell me your story. I would love to hear it. So, so I have known Jackie. Uh, what is it now? 30, 30 years, twenty five years, probably. So, so I grew up in the Philippines. Jackie's from the Philippines. Wow. Um, and yeah, together with some other childhood friends, we decided to solve a very exciting problem. Um, and, and this is us six months later and, and we could really resonate with it. I could resonate with a couple of things you said, sometimes getting lost in the day to day and, you know, uh, forgetting sometimes like what problem you're really solving. And, and, you know, it's very important for us to constantly pull back and stay focused on, on, on what we're here for. Right. And, and that's making that, I mean, I don't know how exciting this will sound to you, but making business to business partnerships reliable. Right. So that's really oh. what we're doing. Think of us, problem. yeah. So it's 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 like, and it's it's more applicable now than any other time, where you know remote work and outsourcing, as we call it, is is, is done more than ever, and um, and it's not solved well today. It is a very difficult problem for somebody in the U.S. to 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 work with an agency in the Philippines. And how do you trust that agency? Um, how do you make sure that you, you when you do your deposit, you get your money's worth? But also for the agencies. Um, how do you get discovered if, if you're really good at delivering a service, but you're not good at marketing yourself? Um, if Google is the only way to do it today, um, we, we can actually disrupt it uh, quite extensively. And, and that's what we're here to solve. <laughs> wow. How did I do, Jerry? No, you did. Actually, you did. You actually did pretty well, actually. Um, I, didn't, I didn't start with the beginning, but OK. But no, no, that, that's OK. I mean, sometimes. You know, <laughs> so what's beautiful is the backstory, right? Like, like y'all grew up together and then 25, 30 years later decide, hey, I would love to work with you because you're really cool. And we've done, you know, our lives have kind of diverged. I'm in Singapore. You're in Belgium. There has to be a story why you're in Belgium. I just have to know this because <laughs> it's like you went from the Philippines and then why you grew up in the Philippines. I mean, kind of cool anyway. Um, but yeah, that, so that's the, or, so the origin story, which is a lot of what's based on really good stories, every movie you've ever seen, there's always some backstory, right? That backstory is critical for the, I don't know, kind of the feeling, I guess, of the organization and why you're together, why you work. P people love to hear that because it's all about, you know, business to business is, is a great example of this, you know? Business is done on trust. Like you brought this up, which is a very, you nailed it to the wall, right? The hardest part about doing business remotely, especially with places all over the world is who do I trust? I, 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 it's the hardest question. <clears throat> who I trust is people that have gone before me, found all the, the bad ones and focused on a good one said, ah, I'll use you. <laughs> like I'll call a buddy. Hey, I need a virtual assistant. Da -da. Who should I help? I mean, this is the ultimate in word of mouth marketing, which is the eventual kind of best way to market your company. You go from hooking a prospect to building a customer up to paying off an advocate or creating advocates that market for you. Ultimate best way, highest ROI, hands down, full stop. Put that in the bank, check it out, circle it, done, right? So yeah, that's that was pretty good. But I think the real question is, why'd you move to Belgium? <laughs> water it's water's fault <laughs> water introduced uh, me to my husband so, oh. uh, her, his, his friend back then and yeah just kind of hit it off and so here i am in belgium wow so there you go like all good stories i met Our a guy a girl <laughs> yeah that's another beautiful recommendation, right? The trusted source. Ah, oh, well, he knows you. You're probably a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, True. that's I how I. a good I reference for this. Yeah, guy, good so. reference, right? I mean, that's how I met. That's how I met Jane. I met Jane through, who's now the mayor of San Francisco, London Breed. Met her through 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 Mayor Breed, and then Minerva. I met through another trusted friend, our friend Troy. So, yeah, I mean, 
You got to use the network. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are they a good person? Hey, they're kind of cute. Okay, yeah, maybe we can work something out. <laughs> I mean, and it's simple, but but you're but you're right. It's similar to companies, right? I mean, that's actually a really good analogy. And and again, that origin story of like how you met your husband, you met it through your friend, your friend referred you, you can kind of say, okay, they're vetted a little bit. I think it's probably what you're trying to build. I mean, it's actually really interesting. Yeah, right? So it's very you needed. Use the right word. Well, in this case, use I the just right word. one chance. Sorry? <laughs> what was that? You use the right word. Oh, no, use the right word. You use the word vetting. You use oh, the, vetting. You're spot yeah, on. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, and, and, and so people resonate with that in an emotional sense. So like your messaging to hook an emotion in, right, is like, how can you trust a remote? I mean, you can say different words, but how can you trust a remote um, agency without some sort of first first party validation, right? Like or third party validation. So it's funny because there's a, a development group in Kosovo that I that I work with, and I'm starting to get to know more and work with them. And they had asked me, hey, well, how do I, you know, can, can you help us with our messaging a little bit? And I said, okay, well, what, what are you trying to get across? And he's like, well, you know, there's all these agencies that do development. And what we hear from customers is they really like us because they can trust us and we're transparent. And we've got this great amount of talent. And I go, oh, so you are a trusted, talented, and transparent team that helps people deliver solutions. And he looks at me, we're on like Google some, some of these video things. This is in Kosovo, right? And he looks at me and he's like, yeah, that's exactly what we do. And I'm all, oh, huh, well, there you go. <laughs> and, huh? Whoa, really? What? I'm like, well, like it's in your heart, right? There's another person, another agency, same thing. It seems that this agency trust thing is a big deal or <clears throat> more importantly, how do you as an agency vet your customer too? Because it goes both ways. I mean, I've found this too. Working with some customers, I'm just like, God, this isn't going to work out. Like, I just, I can't help you. It's just, that doesn't, like, we're not compatible. Like, you know, you're a vegetarian and I like meat. <laughs> we're not going to know the two shall meet, right? We're not, you know, anyway, bad, bad analogy. But it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's it, but it's it, but wow, you're almost like doing this, like, consultant dating kind of thing. I mean, a bad analogy probably, but I like it. Uh, you're spot on. You're spot on both ways. It's exactly our vision as well. Tinder. <laughs> <B2> <laughs> Tinder. Well, is it Tinder a little more? How about Bumble or uh, Lox and Bagel? I think Tinder is a little more nefarious. Okay. Tinder is a little bit more like, you know, <laughs> I, I get what you mean. <laughs> I love it. See, there you go. Your whole vision wrapped up in a in a bow in less than twenty minutes. No, I'm kidding. No, it's it's a good it's a good idea. I mean, there is this huge trust problem, and when you're working remotely and you're trying to scale any kind of business, doesn't matter what it is, business is done at the speed of how much you trust someone. I mean, I think that's a line of some speed of trust or whatever. Maybe IBM. I don't know some company said that it's very important good job all right awesome we solved your problem what's next <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow we'll just change our slogan <laughs> well, i don't know about that. Yeah, i mean we'll you new know, slogan for a month that's tomorrow well it's, it's funny because you should you should bring this up because i i'm working on this methodology called the story funnel which has been sort of like what i've been doing for the last five or six years and and since I have an engineering mind, I like to systematize things. I'm like big into this. It's 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 almost an unhealthy addiction, right? I will spend eight hours, you know, uh, writing a script or automating something that probably would only take me an hour to do. <laughs> that's that's the engineer in me, right? Um, but what's funny is that this is a really tough nut to crack. Um, and you know, through the story funnel process, it's about the framework of how to tell better stories to grow your business. But then also, am I am I telling the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Am I developing the right product and service? Because I haven't found a lot of equivalent to like a, a lean startup, agile, agile approach to marketing, sales, and scale. Just haven't found it. So like with the book, Entrepreneurs, I guess I should build it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Why not?
Why not? I mean, you have you have your podcast, and I'm sure you know with all your experience, you just learn. You just you you seem to me as if somebody just keeps on learning and learning and learning. You apply that, and then eventually you just nail it. You that. build it, and nail. you build it. I would love to see the output of that, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> no, we're we're in the process. I mean that yeah, that development company in Kosovo is helping me out because one of the things that that they found is that so they're a consultancy. They're working on a bunch of, you know, products for customers. And they're like, God, you know, we should build products. We're pretty talented. You know, we can sling some Python and some whatever. But the challenge they have is how do I, how do I launch it, grow it, and scale it? And, you know, as, as an agency that does that, I can appreciate their apprehension to hire other agencies because how do I measure and monitor this? How do I put guardrails up? What are the measures and monitors for launching a product when I have a disparate team all over the planet and I'm like, I don't even know the first way to start. Like, do I do ads? Do I do inbound? Do I do outbound? Do I do content? Do I do, uh, it's, it's this morass as you guys know, right? So that's what we're trying to solve because I think it's important that if you have an idea and you think it's a good idea, that you have some sort of framework, some sort of process that vets it. And I always tell people, if it took you a year to develop your product, it's going to take you a year to market and sell it. And if you spent $2 million building it, it's going to take you $2 million to market and sell it. And at that point, after that, okay, if it doesn't work, it's probably a bad idea. But like, you can't just go viral overnight. You can't, I mean, that's just silly. You can't get into TechCrunch because you raised a round. Like, no one cares. You have to build this relationship, not only with your customer, but with your team, the people you do business with, right? It's very important. And, and that's that's why we're doing it. And I think it's, of course, I would love for you to get your thoughts and maybe I can even help you out with telling your story because it's so important. The differentiator is going to be in the branding and storytelling. It's not going to be in the product. Product is a product features, functions are commodities like no code movement can build anything. That's half the battle. The other half the battle is selling it, marketing it. And that's all brand because it's all pretty much a commodity now to a first order. Of course, some people will say, well, you know, I'm so unique. Yeah, unique like everyone else. Everyone's a snowflake. <laughs> okay, all right, you know, cool. But yeah, interesting. Very, very, very relevant what you what you're saying. So, so we st we started with this idea over a beer with another friend that 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 I've known for 25 years here in Singapore, and and we came up with with trying to solve this problem. And we used no code. Funny mm -hmm. you mentioned it mm -hmm. to prototype, and within 10 days we had our first five vendors signed up, and within three weeks our first project kicked off. So uh, yeah, yeah I, I look forward to seeing your methodology and, and, and see how much we can apply it. It sounds like the way you think applies to the way we like to apply things too. Oh, for sure. No, I love, I love that. And, and that's the, you have the best example of that. You're like, had a couple beers, have an idea, build something, product, you know, get a minimum viable product. We got some product market fit and you're like, now what? Okay, how do I scale this? very different getting from MVP, product market fit, a little bit of revenue to scaling this thing into a real business. That, that's sort of like the trough of despair, the valley of valley despair, the trough of sorrow on the whole Garner hype chart, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's the piece. That's where I come in. That, that's like my secret sauce specialty. Like I get you through the trough of sorrow. That's it. That's all. Like and it's funny because then after that, when you start to grow, then you outgrow me and I go on to the next thing because <laughs> that's just the way I roll. Cause I like that. That's like, that's like to me charge. I love that. Nothing more than to, to figure out like, how is this puzzle going to work? I mean, I always say to people, I'm the first to believe like, Oh, it's a good idea. I believe how are we going to make this work? What do you mean? And I'm like, well, it seems like a good idea. Let's figure it out. Uh, what? what? Like, no one, no one can give me money. No one cares. They all want me growth. I'm like, yeah, but that's, you got to get there. And usually you got to tell a better story than the other guy. <laughs> so super cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it a little bit more. I'll, 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 make, I'll make sure you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Water will make sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> Water will make sure of that. 
Exactly. Everything you just mentioned is actually very, very applicable to where we are today. And and we are at a stage now, and, and, and yeah, look, we're, we're going in a very different topic, but I think this is a cool topic anyway, Jackie, right? Um, we're at a stage now where before trying to scale, we want to truly understand. Mm. So we, we took the conscious step of not automating things that are already automatable to truly mm. understand what makes a client make a decision? What makes a vendor sign up? What, why are they replying? Why are they not replying? Which we would have missed if we automated it from the start. And, and, and I think now we are at a stage where we're somewhat grasping it, mm. um, having some traction, and now we're figuring out, okay, this is what we should scale. This is what we should focus on automate on. So that's mm. kind of where we're at today. Um, wow. So wow. we are at that phase. That's where you're catching us. Yeah, that's that's a really very good way to think about it, because not a lot of people would take that step back. Because th this is what I found, just some anecdotal evidence, and also people that I that I've worked with. They see signal, oh wow, this thing is going to take off like a rocket, right? I'm going to be the next unicorn, right? <clears throat> the problem is, is to your point, which is exactly perfect. What is really resonating, like, because you might have tried 10 different things and you just get the alchemy. It's all kind of convoluted in some weird mismatch of stuff. I mean, you got lucky, which is great. Hey, there's a lot of luck in this. But the real question is, what message is going to resonate with the people that you actually want to go after? And then how do then I do I identify them, qualify them, and get them on the platform, as an example? If you don't know that, you end up wasting a lot of money and time. So stepping back, understanding the story, getting the story straight, figuring out how it aligns, and then doing experiments, which is probably what you guys are doing, experiments on, okay, this worked, this didn't work. You know, we got to ask our clients, why do you, why do you like this? Why do you not? Because as that aligns, then what you'd end up doing is also bringing those new, those, those, you know, um, early adopter clients into the fold. They start to really respect and like you. They're your beta or whatever. Then they start telling their friends and their friends and so like the old, like the old commercial and so on and so on and so on. It was like a great, I think it was a, uh, it was a shampoo commercial. It was like, and then they tell, no, maybe it was like a hair removal product. It was like, then you tell two friends and then, and then it was like this beautiful like thing. I'm like, yeah, that's the way it works. Like sport of mouth. So yeah, I mean, it would actually be really cool to, you know, I can help you guys. We could do the story funnel process on your business figure all that out. You know, I can show you a little bit of it. Not, not a problem. I, I'm always looking to get good case studies and kind of figure out, cause I've got, I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm like, how do I scale this? <laughs> what, what resonates with people? Is it, is it this or that? Or, you know, so more than happy to, to uh, schedule and, that, get your team together and tell better stories. And Jerry, we can, we, and we can help you scale. Don't, don't forget that, right? Uh, you're a business and you're delivering services to business. There's a platform out there now for you too. There is, isn't there? I win, wonder win, what it's win, called. Win, win, no, right. I wonder what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> you see, dear listeners, how it kind of came for full, full circle, right? We had the hero's journey. We solved the problem. Now we're back with the gold. The gold is here. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and then we didn't even I didn't even plan it this way. This is we didn't even plan it. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the best types of stories, by the way, right? They're organic. And you can tell, right? Like the people listening, we resonate with each other, right? Like there's a genuine, like, oh, I actually like what you're doing. And as a storyteller, the trick to all this, it's not really a trick, it's a method. You have to connect with the people you're telling the story to. At some level, some nugget of connection. Because when you have a nugget of connection, when you have this thread, then you have empathy, compassion, and sympathy. That makes the story even stronger. So those of you that have lost a loved one who have died, hopefully you can feel some of the pain like Jackie did. She's like, yeah, I know how you feel. We've connected on that. Now we share a common bond. And now it's not even related to business, right? It's a human connection. The most important thing about storytelling, human connection. Boom. I don't think we should ask any more questions, Jackie. That's it. 
Mic drop, the end. <laughs> oh, yes. We can't can top that. <laughs> no, we can't. It was, well, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. And that's, that's all for today's episode. It was with our master storyteller, Jari Bolander. Thank you so much for enlightening us today and for spending time, time that I know is precious to all of us and that we'll never get back. I do hope that this was a good use of your time. I know it was a good use of ours. We learned. I got to meet two new friends and hear about what you're doing and the origin story of what you've done and that you're friends from 20, 30 years ago. And, you know, it's it's cool. There's always time well spent when you tell good stories with people that you resonate with. So happy to be here. Thanks again for the invite and looking forward to seeing how you guys grow and scale. And hopefully I can be part of that. We'll make sure. We'll make sure. <laughs>